All right, so if we're talking about two point sources producing waves that are going to interfere at a, at a given point, we could say that each wave, and I'll put it in writing, each wave has a different path to travel. I could even say a different path length to travel as it goes from the source to uh, any point that we might choose. To a chosen point. Now you gotta you gotta decide how you're gonna define where that point is. So frequently people will talk about how far the point is away. Um, well, I'll draw a picture because sometimes pictures are more expressive than words. So we could talk about our two sources: source one, source two, and of course one defining measurement of these two sources, as you saw earlier with the two overhead transparencies that got slid back and forth relative to one another. One defining feature is clearly gonna be how far apart are these two values, or these two uh, sources, and I'll label that distance d. Okay? Um, and if I choose a point, point p, a nice convenient spot to choose uh, for measuring distances isn't the distance between source 1 and point p. It's not even between source 1 and point p, but if we choose a point that's halfway between them, we can talk about the distance between that midpoint between source 1 and source 2 and point P. And we might label it up as a distance L. Okay? So we'll say that that point is L meters away from the two point sources that are side by side. Okay? Uh, we could even talk about creating a triangle here. So we could make a triangle that connects S to P and S to P, S1 to P and S2 to P. And then some people in this approach say, hey, look, I like right angle triangles. So let's define a right angle triangle like this. Where this is a right angle triangle. And I'm sorry that my diagram isn't perfect. And just for fun, we can call this point A. So we've got some geometry here. I'm sorry, this is just geometry. Now we could also define a normal. And I'm going to do it in a different color, red. And if we define the normal to be at right angles to a line that might connect source 1 and source 2. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm just talking like lines and line segments and stuff like that. You, well, let's make sure we got everything. The dotted line is a line that's just perpendicular to a line an imaginary line, if you like, that connects source 1 and source 2. And we'll call that the normal. Okay? It's the normal. Much like the normal we might talk about in optics for reflection and, and, uh, and transmission and refraction. We've got a normal perpendicular to the imaginary line connecting source 1 and source 2. Now, the line that we defined as having a length L can get described as having a length L and have a direction that's described as being an angle theta relative to the normal. Okay. Now, as it turns out, we could also use some similar triangles arguments. And you can play the simil similar triangles arguments game on your own time if you want to. But you could recognize that this theta here and this theta here are going to be equal to each other. I'm not going to label it as theta. It'll just make the picture a little bit messier. But those two angles that I, I've uh, drawn the little curvy angle label thing for would be the same angle. Okay. Now what we've said before is that for destructive interference to occur, we would be talking about PS1 minus PS2, the absolute value of the difference between those two. 
And if I look at these two, and I, I look at this triangle that we've created here, the green triangle, I should say, the big green triangle, connecting S1 to P and S2 to P, I know that I, I've, def well, we can say that we've defined these triangle, this triangle as having this length here and this length here being equal. So length AP and length SP would be equal in length. Okay. If AP and SP are equal in length, then that means that as the wave traverses from A to P, and as the wave traverses from S to P, there's not going to be any additional phase shifting that occurs. All the phase shifting has, has to happen in this triangle between source 1 and point A. It's defined by this geometry, right? Because that's the, the extra length that a wave traveling from source 1 has to travel. Okay? So what we could say is that PS1 minus PS2, absolute values, would have to be, the difference between them would have to be equal to AS1, the length of, of the line defined by AS1. Okay, that's the difference in those line segments. Lengths would be AS1, A to S1. Okay. Now, I'd, I'd like to take a look at the second triangle, and I'd like to say, hey, look, using sine, uh, sine ratios, I could say that sine of theta is equal to absolute value of AS1, that's the length of the, the line segment AS1, divided by D. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Sorry, uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, because that theta there and that theta there are going to be the same theta. Now, I want to label up some some equations here. So I would like to call this guy equation one, and I'd like to call this guy equation two. And we're going to do some substitution. I'd like to sub in equation one into equation two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. From S1 to P. I don't know, like if, the, if P was in a different place, I'm going to think of a line from PS1. Not okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're actually talking about a, a specific scenario A, where the, the length here is much bigger than D. Um, so there's a limit issue here. And there's, although that, that's not necessarily going to affect us but we're also talking specifically for destructive interference. So I, I can come back and I can visit the, the geometry issues in a minute. I just want to go through the, the equation derivation first, okay? I prom Sorry? No, it's not. It's not a midpoint, no. It's, a, it's not a perpendicular bisector or anything like that. Okay, yeah. I, again, I, I'll come back to the geometry if we want to at but the end, so okay? The line would have to be a right angle to the, to the, um, to the, the L line for those two to be equal, not to have a right angle. Okay, we'll come back and we can visit it. I promise. So we get at sine of theta equals path length difference PS1 minus PS2 over D. Good. Not trying to play any tricks here and I don't want anybody to be misled. Okay, so I, we can come back and we can talk about the geometry afterwards. Now, I'd like to go back to an equation that we said earlier. I'm going to call it equation 3. And the equation 3 that we talked about earlier, make sure that I, I've got what we're looking for. Um, was that point times S1 minus point times S2, uh, sorry, not times, uh, line PS1 and line PS2 is equal to, um, sorry, let me make sure we've got this right. For, for destructive interference, it's equal to N minus 1 half lambda, and now I'd like to sub this equation 3 
into this expression. And you end up getting, for destructive interference, sine theta equal to n minus 1 half lambda. Yeah. n minus 1 half lambda over d. And since this is the destructive condition, this is also going to be our destructive condition. OK, so this is going to be our, our destructive condition for uh, a known angle of this imaginary line relative to the normal um, and for a specific distance between two point sources for destructive interference to occur. Okay. So if we know the wavelength, if we know the angle between this point, or the line that is defined by these two points and the normal, and if we know the separation, we should be able to figure out whether destructive inter interference is going to happen at a particular point. Okay. Now, the, a similar method could be used for finding constructive interference relative to theta and d. And it would take on a similar format. Sine of theta is equal to n lambda over d. Okay. Now, again, the n's take on integer values. So if I use n equals 1 here, then I'll get one theta value. If I had n equals 2, then I'd get another theta value. So we'd say that theta is going to be n dependent. So we're going to put a subscript there on the theta. Okay, And some people may like to differentiate because we have too many n's floating around. They may like to say for constructive interference, we're going to use n's. And for destructive interference, why don't we use m's? But they'd both be integers. Some people like to make that differentiation. And, and you can make your call that way, whether we're talking about the m nth integer or the mth integer. That, I'll leave that up to you. Okay. <coughs>